B98.5, good morning. It's Randy. This is Randy. Is this Lee? It's Lee, but how are you? I'm doing good. How are you, man? Man, I'm great. I'm actually headed to the studio. we got a big week of recording this week for the new record, so I'm excited. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Do you have a title on that record yet? Well, no, I've got about four or five songs that could be the title easily, so oh. I don't know... <laughs> I don't know what it might be. It might be called What Keeps You Up at Night. It might be called, uh, shoot, I don't know. There's a bunch. <laughs> it's, it's, you got a decision to make, so that's what you got to do. Yeah, we're going to have about probably 20 songs recorded here in the next uh, week, and so that I'm going to dwindle that down, you know, obviously. So. Now, when, you're we'll in the, when, when you say studio, are you in Nashville? I am in Nashville. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, so you're an hour, uh, I guess, behind us, so it's 830 there. Is that right? That's right, it's 8.30. Uh, okay, good. You sound wide awake for 8.30 in the morning. That's good. You must have got your sleep last night. Yeah, I do. Well, I, I must have kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sometimes that doesn't allow you to get to the sleep at night. That's for sure. That's right. good. Now, that's you. <laughs> now, you're, up for my my, my uh, getting up early, my, my time of getting up has changed in the last couple of years, I'll tell you that. Yeah, how old are your kids? So I got a seven-year-old and a two-year-old, and my two-year-old is, I mean, a bear and a bull uh, all at the same time. <laughs> do you when, uh, do you take the seven-year-old to school? Is that your job? Do you drive him to school? <laughs> no, you know what I, I did for the first few years, and now he rides the bus. So uh, uh, he left riding the bus. Yeah, it's nice when you ride the bus with your friends and all that. Yeah, it's yeah. a whole different. Thing. They grow up to be big boys and stuff, and they yeah. got to do that. Sure, absolutely. That's right. That's right. All right. Now you're coming here to Augusta on uh, March the uh, 19th, but I don't know how you swung this. How are you in Hawaii like two two weeks before that? That's <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Dude, we leave for Hawaii uh, in three or four days, right after I get done with the studio. Then we go to Australia. Yeah. And then, we come back, and then we come back, and I'm only home for about 12 hours, and I hit the road again, and we'll come see y'all. And then you're, that's insane. That's crazy traveling right there. Yeah, it's pretty long. And that, that flight, uh, well, you know, we had to stop in Hawaii because it breaks up the flight to Australia. Right, well, <laughs> see, I love the reasoning there. I love that yeah. reasoning, yes. <laughs> we had to stop in Hawaii, sure. That's great. Now, uh, Hawaii two shows, then Australia two shows, then you're back in the uh, United States on the East Coast of all places. Oh, That's right, man. I feel it's, it's, it's a long way, but you know what, man? I uh, I got some uh, a bunch of music to listen to and a bunch of work to do, and so uh, time flies when you're when you're working and sleeping. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that is true. Um, now, when you're in Hawaii, do you do any surfing or anything like that, or or well, are you? If I did do some surfing, it wouldn't be in Hawaii. Where would you do it? Because uh, I think those waves and that coral might destroy me. I'm not a surfer. <laughs> My brother can surf. I, I grew up on the little small little waves in Myrtle Beach. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. So even even probably the waves in Australia would be too much for you. I guess yeah, I don't I'll, know. I'll probably I'll probably be the guy by the pool in, in Hawaii, or just right there on the beach, just hanging out. That sounds like a pretty good guy to be. It really does. Yeah. So this tour is called um, the Life Off My Years Tour. Yeah. Why that name? Well, it's actually from a song that was on uh, a couple records ago for me. And it's a song that Eric Church actually wrote. And I found out one day, you know how sometimes you're using the bathroom and you, you look at, they have books sitting around and you can look through books. Well, there was a quote, and I, and I like a quote book, and it's from Abraham Lincoln that said, I'll take years off my life before I take life off my years. Oh. And so that's the point. It's like we're leaving it all on, on stage and we want everybody who comes to the show to just leave everything out there, just like on a football field, you know. It's like give it all you got and, and, and not, you know, it's just I, I kind of a little bit the way I live my life, you know, a little on the edge because I just, you know, life is short and you got to take advantage of it while you got it. That is great. That's very philosophical, I'll tell you. I love that. That is great. <laughs> no, really, yeah. Now, not to bring up a sore subject, but you just mentioned football. You played for Clemson. Uh, I take it you watched the national championship game uh, this past season here. I did. I was actually, uh, I was there. You were there? Oh, you lucky I took, dog. I took my daddy and my brother, and 
Uh, it was a really special weekend. Yeah. I say it, and it's not a sore subject because, you know, we played that game. I think nobody gave us a shot at even the last three games before that, even though we were number one. Yeah. And uh, and I think even Alabama came out with like, what, what in the world is going on? And so now everybody knows we're real. Yep. Uh, and uh, so we walked out of there, and uh, the Alabama fans were very respectful and didn't say a word. They were just like, this game, guys. That yeah. Was just it was a special game. I think the Alabama fans were like, Whew, we got lucky to win that game. Because <laughs> that was an awesome game. I loved it. Yeah, I'm a huge football fan, too, especially college football. I love college football. I uh, right. really do. All right, well, uh, now listen, I got one more thing, though. You were on The Tonight Show how many years ago? Oh, man, I guess it was a couple, two or three years ago. And that was with Jimmy Fallon, right? Yeah, we've been with Fallon. We've been with, uh, we were doing Letterman, like one of his last shows, so Leto and all that. So oh. It was a good few years. Yeah, that is that is pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Now, were any of those guys uh, any better or different than the others? Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, Jay Leno was the most personable. Uh, everybody else we never really saw until we got on stage and we just shook their hand afterwards. Yeah. Um, uh, and but Jay Leno, because you have to kind of be there all day long. They make they don't want any chance of stuff going off. So long story short, Jay Leno came into my dressing room in his jeans and his jean shirt, sat down, and we talked about cars. And he just is the most personal, caring guy. And uh, and I, you know, I think that's kind of that's one of the reasons a lot of folks get ahead in life is just treating people how you want to be treated. You know? Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. There's no sense in being a uh, uh, when you can be a nice guy. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Tyler was really nice, too. I loved him. He's cool. Yeah, good. Very good. Okay, Lee, hey, we're looking forward to seeing you coming here to the Augusta Civic Center March 19th for your show. You're bringing Dylan Scott and Claire Dunn with you uh, on that tour, on that concert. And uh, I'm just looking forward to it. I know it's going to be fantastic. Thanks for talking to us, and you take care of yourself. Good luck in the recording studio. Brother, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you all soon, and it'll be, uh, we'll be rocking.